I have to admit that sometimes it's tough to find the stories I want for this segment. There's never a shortage of sexism, mind you, but a lot of the time it's just the same old shit. And I could easily fill three minutes a week by just saying, here's a list of people that are still assholes, but it wouldn't be very entertaining. So to keep things fresh and on topic, I'm looking for stories about religious-inspired sexism that have a hook. Something I haven't already had to think of funny shit to say about a dozen times already. Of course, you can't always get what you want, so a lot of weeks I have to settle for stuff that doesn't have anything to do with religion or stories that are damn reminiscent of ones we've already covered. But this is not one of those weeks. Take this first story out of Virginia's Wesleyan College. It starts off like far too many tales we've heard out of Christian colleges recently, and secular ones too, for that matter. A female student goes to the school to file a rape complaint, the school sits on their hands, and the victim has to lawyer up before anything gets done at all. So far, yes, that's a story we've heard far too many times before. But where this one really goes off the rails is in the school's response. See, as part of the discovery process in a suit against the school, the lawyers for Wesleyan College have requested a complete sexual history from the victim in an effort to rule out the possibility that she's a slut. The lawyers defend themselves by pointing out that in her lawsuit, she says that she's suffered from a lack of interest in sex that has damaged her romantic relationships. And how can they determine the veracity of that statement if they can't interview her last couple boyfriends and ask them how good of a fuck she was? It's probably worth noting that asking for that kind of information in a rape case is illegal during a criminal investigation, but since this is a civil suit, the lawyers may still get away with it. Because apparently American colleges didn't think there were quite enough disincentives for college-aged women to report rape, and I'm afraid the courts might agree with them. And if that's depressing the hell out of you, let me make it worse by reminding you that, all things considered, America is a pretty good place to get raped. Consider what this poor woman would be dealing with if she lived in, say, for example, India. Astute listener David sent me a story from India today about an unnamed woman whose government denied her an abortion after she was raped into pregnancy. This disgusting practice is all the more unforgivable when you consider how rapey India is. But her story gets even worse. According to cultural tradition, she now must undergo a test of purity to prove to her husband that she didn't secretly enjoy the rape. After all, if it was a legitimate rape, she shouldn't have gotten pregnant, right? So how does one prove they didn't enjoy their sexual abuse? Why, by balancing a 90-pound rock on their head, of course. This comes from a misogynistic practice called Agni Pariksha, which loosely translates into the most fucked up concept of prenatal care in human history. But unfortunately, we've got lower yet to go. Because as disgusting as these responses to rape are, it turns out that we found a method of rape prevention that's even worse. Killing her before any men can get to her. Now, I want to point out two things before I relay this story. The first is that it hasn't actually been confirmed by a reputable news site, so I can't guarantee its veracity. The second is that the story is so fucked up that the fact we are even considering it as a possibility says everything you need to know about the culture in question. This story comes to us from Dubai, where the father of a 20-year-old woman allegedly attacked lifeguards that were trying to rescue her from drowning because he didn't want strange men to touch his daughter even if the other option was watching her die. Now, to Dubai's credit, according to the story, the man was arrested and awaits trial for negligent homicide. The deputy director of Dubai's police force lamented how unnecessary the death was in a statement that read, in part, quote, for fuck's sake, she could have just balanced a giant rock on her head when they got her back to shore, end quote. So, with apologies for once again crippling your attempt to maintain faith in humanity, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath. 